morning everyone this is Chaitali Bagh, uh, Chief of Bureau with Aviation and Defence Universe and I am at Indo-Pacific Maritime Dialogue which is happening here at Maniksha Centre Dolakua and I'm very very privileged to have with me today Admiral Jayanta Pereira who is the former commander of the Sri Lankan Navy Colombo Sri Lanka and he is a very renowned one when it comes to speak about Indian and Sri Lankan Navy ties. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your very precious time. He has spoken um, in the previous session here in the dialogue, and we are going to talk to him more about the Sri Lankan Indian Navy ties. So, sir, my first question to you comes Where do Indo Sri Lankan Naval and Coast Guard ties stand in the Indo Pacific maritime geopolitical scenario? Thank you uh, very much for giving me opportunity also. You know, in Sri Lanka and India, we are, especially the Indian Navy, Sri Lankan Navy, we very close ties. And we have bilateral relationships and bilateral meetings, and we do joint operations together. When we are in distress or support, always India come to help us. And more than that, India giving us a lot of uh, training and other support as well. So we have, and also we have formed the Coast Guard as well. And uh, that is in also very uh, primitive sta state, as not like the Indian Coast Guard. But uh, we are joint operating with the uh, Sri Lankan Navy, and it's completely a department under Ministry of Defence. Uh, but uh, the links between India and Sri Lankan navies are extremely good, and we take decision together. And we are especially I want to tell, uh, we had recently uh, we we are MRCC, you know, the shipping. A distress uh, situation comes, you know, immediately we get the support from Indian Navy and the Indian Coast Guard. We do it uh, jointly and uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, the present uh, our Navy is also slowly uh, stretching out to be uh, brown water, not the blue water capabilities. So India, of course, is a blue water. You have two carriers. Uh, we are also stepping out now. I have to mention one point here. That our Navy, we have gone through a difficult period during LTT time. So our Navy developed to meet the challenges of LTT, you know. So we have changed concept to asymmetric war. Now it is not there, but now we are stretching out as a brown water Navy and we are more professional. So for that uh, we are getting training from uh, Indian Navy and also we are exposed to other countries like uh, regional countries and the Europe and the US and there. So uh, that is what I want to tell you, we are having even the our contemporaries who counterparts are very close and we can talk to each other. Whatever the political differences we had, you know, countries have individual political agendas. But we always support you that we should not forget India is a true friend. That we have to continue and maybe so that is why I am here, you know, speaking to Indian right. this this uh, seminar. As you mentioned, sir, yes, Sri Lanka has been going to an upheaval like LTT and pr presently what happened, uh, the political uh, uprising and the political um, uh, this thing that happened in uh, Sri Lanka. <laughs> what do you think has Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan Navy has overcome uh, the situations or it, there is still a lot to go from to stabilize? Well, the military wise of course we are stable. Uprising is in the politically that is the protesters in some right. community. Mm -hmm. So they have gone against but the government. That affects the decision making in the defense yeah, as well. Yeah, defense. But only thing uh, we are sea going. Normally we do very little in the ground operations mm -hmm. you know, because the army and the police force is there. So that was, you know, uh, um, the government actually the situation handling very more democratic way. Uh, that we maybe be the reason that you know president had to go. Otherwise, you know, if we have taken very hard decision, you know, yes. this shouldn't have happened. Right. So that thing, they have not taken that decision. Right. So for that, actually, the forces can't do anything. That's the political master's decision. But uh, we were not involving much for that. Actually, we were looking after the seaside, actually, going out to sea and mm -hmm. looking after our territorial waters and extended territorial waters. Those are the things we had then. Uh, but any time, you know, if this, uh, when you have some distress situation, uh, to maintain the law and order of the country. Uh, as law enforcement, uh, we always give provide the assistance to the government authority with the approval of Minister of Defence. We were prepared, but uh, when you have emergencies in the country, uh, that didn't happen. Unfortunately, that is when now finished. Slowly, we are picking up. Mm -hmm. So, sir, what steps is Sri Lanka Navy taking to keep the Indian Ocean region safe? 
nobody else better than you can tell us you have seen such a long tenure yeah now uh, in now we are sri lanka in i mentioned also we are strategically very very important yes right so it has become a, sri lanka now sri lanka has become a punching bag you know everybody is interested of you know getting involved in the south of sri lanka mm -hmm. one is uh, the chinese presence and americans presence yes. so many players now sure. one time people said uh, sri lanka has become a beautiful bright there are so many boyfriends you know uh, coming <laughs> i agree i yeah. agree sir but i have to whoever who comes but you never compromise the security of another country yes. now this <clears throat> now you know the prime minister modi has look is act is policy china has a road and belt So American wants to do rebalancing. So all people are present, you know, that yes. you know, international water they can run. So they have different interests, you know. China has different, and Americans have different, you know. Everything is there. Even today, questions also not for one month or two. This is for the presence of Chinese in the sea. Right. Exactly. But in Sri Lankan Navy, it's not a big navy. So our navy is not a. We don't sail much oceans, you know, normally. But wherever in Indian Ocean. in our area we are 100% protecting and we are now focusing on the drug trafficking smuggling those things are we are there we are not a force like conventional force go and destroy anything that is there but if we have any support we always keep indian navy in. that right. is the link that we have okay. so we always get support from special for disaster situation mm -hmm. <clears throat> they come and help so that is the navy position but we are professionally going to improve you know we have to do professional navy capabilities now but uh, in our country uh, you now we had this type of seminars every year now because the kuwait mm. could not yeah. but <coughs> kuwait time we are continuing with the conference and all all the regional uh, major navies chiefs are visiting sri lanka i identify one thing is because we you know we are a hub and uh, what you call strategically important place that is the thing so that is the role that we play in indian ocean right. but we are doing uh, we are getting involved in the trilateral bilateral yes. that is with india and also uh, the cod you know that is uh, us yeah. uh, and uh, japanese and australians that also exercises we do a lot of american sri lankan exercises we are doing so those are doing just to to keep the presence in indian ocean hmm. from yeah. your comment itself yes uh, uh, sri lanka is like the girl who everybody is eyeing for and once china has um, since you were telling us about uh, the ports that uh, sri lanka is building right now <coughs> with chinese investment chinese help so don't you think uh, so this will uh, this will dilute a little bit of uh, the security issues uh, that india might be thinking because china india relations we know we all know how it is it's a sweet and sour relationship that we have <laughs> so Don't you think uh, it is going to uh, dilute the relationship of uh, India and Sri Lanka? No, I don't think. Uh, whoever the political leadership we come, whether it is in any party, always maintain the good relationship with India. Mm -hmm. We are not a country, you know. We can cannot go away from India and align to somebody else. Yeah. We have to be aligned. Not the independent country, but we have to be aligned with them because you know. India security is our security. Exactly. That's that would have been my yeah, next yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. India actually. security. If anything happens uh, in India, that will definitely affect to us. Sir. Right. So we'll. Who the leadership has to be. I'm not in the government, but realize that you know if we compromise something, mm -hmm. it will definitely affect to Sri Lanka. Especially in the Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean. Both of our. You know that we have to go together. Whatever you know, we have some agendas. We have agendas. India will not like Chinese presence in Sri Lanka, as you mm. said. But China, you know. The law we have, you know, taken rule. They are now this uh, Ammandur is not a road and belt concept. Okay. This was actually initially there was a big plan those days, and they have offered this to India. Uh huh. Initially they offered, but India has not taken up. Okay. Now even now India can uh, invest. There are a lot of opportunities are there for the industries mm -hmm. as well. In if you take Kalambu port also, we have I mentioned that uh, you know public private partnership. Lot of other people are there. Right. so that is that just because if that you know the country has to develop that we are not going to compromise but we have to be mindful my personal view mm. if anything happens to india yeah that it will definitely affect sri lanka so that right. is the reason that we have to compromise we should not compromise national security or that exactly especially the indian ocean uh, yeah, yeah. security so we can't be 
with China and uh, you can you can't yes, ask China, India to go home. No, that you can't do. No, yeah, yeah. You have to be in line. So we are not. Going you have to balance home. both of them. <laughs> you have to balance both the boyfriends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sir, uh, you talk, you uh, your sp presentation here, since it was a ports and uh, maritime um, session, your presentation was very much uh, on the ports that you're building. So I would like to ask you, during this upheaval in the country, uh, definitely the work was stalled for some time. <coughs> Did it created any problem for you, for the um, more than that? Actually, during the COVID period, mm -hmm. got affected. Normally, our Income, uh, we, we used to do uh, transshipment uh, 7.2 million TUs in hour per, mm -hmm. per year. So last year it was dropped. 2020 figures I told you last year it was a little drop because of the point. Uh, this uh, protest and other things also affected but very short period. Right. You know, normally uh, the unions or they are gone and they have not stopped the work also. Mm -hmm. They have not stopped much because they wanted to get rid of the leadership. So the president left. So after that, you know, this is the first time in the history, I think, this happened in our country. <laughs> yes. That happened. So that is the issue. Now we have to, economically we have to, now we are going to, we have to get the IMF loans and so on and so on. IMF, uh, they put a lot of conditions and people are going through a lot of hardship. Mm -hmm. That is there. Right. Finally, sir, what is Sri Lankan Navy's wish list for the modernization of its fleet? We have a long-term plan, 2030, we have. Uh, we want to improve, now recently also we get uh, got ship from China, all uh, from uh, US. And we have got two ships from, uh, three ships from India, and four ships, one given free of charge, and other thing we got it from Goa shipyard. So uh, we are actually, uh, we are running still, uh, we don't have frigates, OP, offshore petrol system. You only to sanitize the area. Our plans are there, you know, not immediately. Uh, it will be, you know, uh, provision to go as a professional navy to improve the, our strength, you know, our, our mm -hmm. inventory we have to improve. Uh, but only thing, uh, financially we are going through a very difficult period. Because of that might get delayed, you know. Okay. So, now India, you know, every uh, dockyard, they have a ship being built for Indian. Navy. Yes. We have only one dockyard. Mm -hmm. But only thing, uh, that is not given to them. You know, because of war, we have to get quick. Delivery and we went for especially the West and the UC Israel. So it will not immediately, but it will take few years, you know, to get into the normal platform. Now we have quite a sufficient uh, big ships are there. Plans are there, you know, when we propose uh, to the top people in the country that we like to know we are planning to get a helicopter. Recently, India gave a that we have to thankful India gave a Dunia aircraft for yes. maritime recognition. Mm -hmm. So that is one of the value added thing and for the name, but only thing that you want to have to run. So we are doing it collaboratively. So area, looking after our area, so the facilities are enough, actually, especially maritime recognitions. And uh, we are a land, uh, island nation. Our sea is about eight times more than the <laughs> land. So we have to sanitize that area. Yeah. Great, sir. It was an honor to listen to you at the session and it was a pleasure to speak to you right now because there were so many insights that we got to know about the Indian and Sri Lankan Navy ties. Old friends, definitely we, we will be friends forever because we are attached from history again. Thank you so much for your time, sir, and we really look forward to speaking to you again sometime later. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you, sir.